Time now for your morning rounds with CBS News contributor Dr. Holly Phillips. First up, concerns continue to mount at home and abroad over the threat posed by the Zika virus. CBS News chief medical correspondent Dr. John LaPook recently returned from Brazil, the epicenter of the outbreak, where he spoke with the doctor who found the link between Zika and birth defects. Pediatric neurologist Dr. Vanessa Vanderlinden saw her first case of microcephaly back in August. Soon, more infants with the same condition, the same unusually small head. During two weeks in the middle of uh, September, uh, five cases of babies with microcephaly. Her mother, Anna, also a doctor, phoned with troubling news. She called me, Vanessa, that now I see seven babies with microcephaly in the same day. When you heard that, what did you think? It's a new disease. It's something very strange. You need to think of agents that cause epidemic, that cause many cases at the same time. You were like detectives. Yes, yes. <laughs> After ruling out the usual causes, they looked for other clues. 70% of the women reported a rash during pregnancy, a symptom that helped lead them to the main suspect, Zika. <laughs> Rayani Campello and Elvis Torres's baby, Evelyn Melissa, was born in October. This is her first child. <laughs> if any mother or father could choose, she said, they would choose to have a normal baby, a healthy baby. But because you cannot choose, I am going to love my daughter. We can't go back and change something here in Brazil, but we can uh, help the other place of the world. For CBS This Morning Saturday, Dr. John LaPook, Recife, Brazil. So, Holly, what are the next steps for combating the virus? Right. Well, really, scientists on the front line are, are looking at a multi-angle approach for, for combating it. You know, one of the one of the priorities is really to create better and safer and more effective insecticides and pesticides so we can cut down on the mosquito population and protect people from bites. Um, the next idea is to introduce genetically engineered mosquitoes that cannot contract the Zika virus. They then compete biologically and Zika mosquitoes die out. But really, the big frontier is a vaccine, right? That's how you actively eradicate any illness. Uh, according to the World Health Organization, we're about 18 months away from being able to do large-scale trials on those vaccines. Um, but certainly, hope is on the horizon. All right, that's a lot of time. Now to life expectancy in this country. The Centers for Disease Control say that, on average, Americans can expect to live 78.8 years. That's lower than in other developed countries. And in new study finds three reasons why. So, Holly, what are these areas? Well, you know, this is, this is interesting. We've known for some time that in the U.S., our life expectancy is lower than in other similar countries. Similar means uh, similar economic profiles, industrial development. Mm -hmm. So uh, what they found in this study was that there were three reasons that took a really big toll on our life expectancy. They were gun violence, uh, drug overdose, and car accidents. Um, now, the study was done in a very straightforward way. The CDC looked at life expectancy for Americans in the year 2012 and compared it with a dozen other similar countries. Some mm -hmm. of those countries were Japan, uh, the UK, and, and Germany. Um, and they found that we live 2.2 years less yeah. uh, than people in those countries. It's not because we're dying of old age sooner. Rather, people's lives are being taken in the middle of life, so between the ages of 25 and 65, and that's bringing down our averages. Two years, that's a, that's a, that's a big number. It, I mean, what, do we take, what do we take away from this? It really is. Um, well, you know, Anthony, I, I, I try to stay in my lane on our program. I talk health, not politics. <laughs> but, but what I will say is I think when we look at these three factors, we have to recognize two things about them. Number one, they're all linked. Uh, uh, so drug use, abuse, addiction, and trade increases gun violence. Uh, car accidents are directly linked with alcohol and drugs. Um, and dr uh, access to guns in the setting of drugs also increases both intentional and unintentional deaths. Um, the other issue is that these things are largely preventable. Uh, so we know in other, in other developed nations they have drugs, they have guns, they have cars, but somehow they're able to have those things in a context where they don't take as many lives. Uh, so I think from a policy perspective, from a health uh, policy perspective, we need to look at these things as we look at other illnesses and figure out how we can, how we can lower the death rates from them. 
All right, next up, some potentially good news for flyers. New research has uncovered a treatment that might help travelers ward off jet lag. The small study found short flashes of light while sleeping can help prevent disruptions in a person's body clock. The researchers say this could help travelers speed up the process of adjusting to a different time zone. I think this is, this is fascinating. The idea would be you expose yourself to these short bursts of life, light before you travel mm -hmm. uh, so that you experience less jet lag when you get there. Right now, your body clock adjusts naturally, but about an hour a day. So if you go someplace that's eight hours ahead or eight hours behind, you are looking at at least eight days until you're back on track. If you can get rid of a few of those hours ahead of time, it can make a big difference. Yeah, absolutely. Five minutes. Dr. Holly Phillips, thank you so much.